that's quite close to my heart. Um, I also want to just fight again, man. Legit, I'm probably going to go for a run tomorrow. Like, I just, I feel fresh. I feel hard. easy. You're hard. Push-ups, yeah, as many push-ups as I want, man. Like, light work. Bro, I, I feel push -ups fit. Push-ups as well. Like, fitter than I've ever felt in my life. And I was just mowing down these opponents. when they Mowing down bombs is what you was doing. Feel my power. When they feel it, they cage up because I'm scary, bro. I'm a scary guy. And you can hit me and I keep coming forward. I'm a guy that wants to end people. That's it. On a, on a, just on a, on a boxing level, yeah. you know, we spoke after the first fight. And I watched the, the, the Logan Paul fight on... on um, on TV, I didn't see it live. But what was very impressive from a boxing side was what he's worked on is he stays calm. He catches a man, he stays calm. Swoops came, we knew he would come. Mm. And he hasn't boxed before, it's his only chance is to rush him. Rushed him, stayed calm. Um, Alexis Marios have done fantastic, fantastic work, jobs. especially on the short punches. He stays calm. Short it's, punches? It's, Massive steps for someone who's been 1,020 days. I haven't seen 1,005 days. Oh, oh, yeah, days. Oh, oh, oh. It's, uh, I mean, yes, naturally, he's a gifted athlete. You don't naturally gifted. To see that, despite the, I saw some interesting videos you put in the family with a belly and figure that out. <laughs> 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 we don't need to talk about that one. But, but, you, know, but you see that, that that's one thing, but hard work pays off. and. I said hard before, work. Oh, hard work. Look at him like a pop star, like an entrepreneur, like a whatever else he's introduced oh. as. He, he lives the life of a boxer. Oh. And, and that's, you know, yes, he's able to do that because he's financially in a position to do that. Not every novice boxer can do that. But hey, he does it and he makes the most, and he pushes himself to the limit. You know, that's, that's something that mm -hmm. I'd love to see with, with, with other guys, but, but to see someone who's so ambitious in all walks of life is fantastic it's a fantastic lesson to take away for everyone watching shocking people listen off the rip let me let you man know what time it is i ain't gonna lie on twitter i posted after the event apart from the headline apart from mr lsi the card was actually the best real boxing card i've watched possibly ever in terms of the depth and in terms of the competitiveness and in terms of the quality. Yeah? And I'll tell you that to say that, listen, whilst the card as a whole was the best boxing card I've watched ever, the main event equally was legitimately a top five worst main event of all time. In fact, scrap that. I'm going to go double polarity here. I'm telling you... The undercard was probably the best undercard in my boxing memory. I'm trying to think. Name me, name me an undercard yeah, where you've seen 50-50 and or dudes actually turning up. looking. They, listen, these YouTube cats, they turn up here. Yeah, they, they don't want to lose. They put it all in there. They leave it all out there for the most part. And most importantly, they look for the stoppages. It's crazy. A lot of these weird ass real boxers. Oh, I'm Olympic real boxer. Go in there and they're fighting bums and they're playing tip tap toe. And the worst thing was, you had Chris Uwank Jr. up there trying to, like, he, like he's a real boxer himself. And he, oh, yeah, I didn't really like his performance. He he had more to give. Wait there a minute. You went, you was in there with Liam Chiniums and you was dancing around in the last round. Imagine. After Chris Ewank's last performance, him being a man to talk about someone not leaving it all out there. Was you leaving it all out there when you spent the last round running in circles from a man you'd knocked down three times? You goofy. Anyway, like I said, the end of the card was fire. The main event was categorically one of, if not the, worst main events in the history of the game. I've never seen anything worse. And for that to be the case, and for this goober here, this 10, I ain't gonna, why be? You've got a big forehead. Whatever you say about my forehead, yeah, my hairline don't start halfway down my barnet. Yeah, this guy's got a proper 10 finger forehead. This big alien wannabe looking ass dude sat up there. And I got, listen, I've got no problem. 
if you want to knock, well, not, the worst thing is, he didn't even knock the bums out. But for, listen, if you want to beat bums up and then come out and say, listen, I'll just beat up two of the worst bums ever in history of the game. It is what it is. That's fine. But to come out, you didn't even sleep the bums. When Jake Paul fights bums, yeah, they get slept. Nate Robinson, who really, Nate Robinson was better than the two guys you fought. Nate Robinson came to fight. You fought Mr. Hood Dude, Swamps, who just ran around. Oh, man, I'm from London. I'm a London bad man. I, I, I told you. I told you before the fight. All this fronting. Oh, man, I'm from I'm from EC2. I'm an EC2 kind of nick. What happened to that? What happened to representing? Well, listen, Swamps. What happened to Mr. Swamps's postcode? Where was that? Where was his postcode at? Yeah? Oh, man, you know, I'm from a postcode. I'm representing my postcode. Where was his postcode at? The people must know. No postcode. Not even a little bit of postcode. All that talk about the hood. So sick of hearing about hood dudes. And then you man can't fight a lick. Yeah? That's the bottom line. Swamps can't fight a lick. He's got no squabbles whatsoever. But what makes it worse is the fact that Mr. LSI, who's been doing this for four years, five fights deep, actually fought a man who's never done this before. It's like, and then to come out after that, you just fought a man, you couldn't stop the man. You couldn't even really hurt the man. The reason Swamps kept jumping on the floor was because he didn't know what he was doing. Let's be real now. I don't think he'd ever been hit before. So obviously, when you fight someone who's never been hit before, they're going to jump on the floor. But after doing that, you come out and talk about the power you've got. If you had power, your opponents would have been seriously damaged. Like Nate Robinson was. Like Tyron Woodley was. Like Ben Askren was. They was all categorically, neurologically compromised. Yeah, there was nothing, they physically could not stand up at the point of impact. Every time these guys jumped on the floor that you was fighting, it was, it was a, it was a kind of, you know what I mean, it was a stumble. It was never a clean, actual knockdown. And you're out here talking about, I've got power like Wilder. You've got, f listen, the only thing that's comparable to Wilder is the size of your forehead. Yeah, your forehead is as big as Wilder's power is in his right hand. Yeah, you're, listen. Your forehead is maxed out. Max power in your forehead. Yeah, you got a 10 out of 10 forehead. And Wilder has 10 out of 10 power. That's the only comparison. Yeah. This guy looks like them Egyptian cats. Have, have, you, have you ever seen them Egyptian Anunnaki cats with the big long alien heads? My man, I'm sorry to say this, but KSI, especially from that side angle, looks as if He's been bred with some next An Anuaki Don, some next alien Don. Yeah, have you seen, watch the film Predator vs. Alien. Them aliens have this big long barnet. It goes like curves round. See if you can see it from here. Yeah, see, my, look at that, look at the side angle there. Peep the side angle. Big barnet have an ass. Yeah, Who, super duper big barnet at that. Anyway, listen. The point of this video is, this guy here has no shame. Again. Fair play to you. Your undercard was fire. But to charge pay-per-view for that crock of shit was shocking. I'm sorry. For that main event. Let's not forget, people. The undercard is great to have. But the main event is supposedly what people pay for. I don't know how that was sanctioned. I don't understand it. I don't get that. Of all the people you could pick here, you picked. Genuinely, I haven't seen... A main event, name me one, go on, if I'm wrong, yeah, name me a pay-per-view, in fact, scrap that, name me a non, name me any top card, name me any headline fight in the history of the game that you've seen two worse opponents, just give me one, both of them, to be quite frank, I've never seen a, headlo a card headliner in the history of the boxing be as bad as Swamps or... Panini, this goofy here, talking about he Mexican, you're bumsican, is what you is. And this clown here, fronting, how embarrassing. You've been doing this four or five years, and you walked in this goober, Panini. Panini in swamps, Mr. Fake Postcode Warrior, Mr. Fake Mexican. 
And you got Kala Saulan talking about, oh, KSI's, KSI's, KSI's hooks were so short. Are you joking? Seriously, technically speaking, KSI's shots are the opposite of short. Mike Tyson is short. Canelo, at points, has short hooks. LSI was swinging like Wilder. Yeah, Wilder, but without the power. That's what he was swinging like. Because to be fair, he did hit the guys. He just couldn't put them out. And that's a problem Jake Paul's never had. When Jake Paul hits you, you're going out. Yeah, Gib. KSI's number one sparring partner. Jake. Every time Jake Paul hit him, he had to do the stanky leg. Every time Jake Paul hit Nate Robinson, he doing the stanky leg. When Jake Paul hit Tyron Woodley's clean, he doing the stanky leg. When Jake Paul hit Ben Askren clean, he taking he he's taking a seat. Yeah, he walking it off. And what gets me is I understand Goober YouTubers like Mr. LSI having to front. Even though I don't respect it. I told you before. I've got no problem with people making certain moves. But be honest. Don't be doing what you did and fronting like you really did something. It was embarrassing to watch. And really, people like Kala Sauerland, people like Kala Snifferland, should be respecting the sport more than not only to put on a crap event, not only to put on a crap main event, but then to try and convince people we were seeing something magical. Oh, the shortness of the shots. Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy's so amazing. Oh, I can't believe history's been made. For a real boxing man to sit there and say, history's been made. You're right, it has been made. I've never seen a headline, a more bummy headline, pay-per-view headliner. That's the God on his truth. I guarantee you the Guinness Book of Records are going to be on the blower on Monday. Trying to get this into the record books. Never, in the, for the first time in history, a pay-per-view show has been headlined by the worst boxers in the history of the game. They're not even boxers. One dude had 20 days notice. And then this guy, LSI, was actually in the post-fuck press conference saying, Oh, I've beat a pro now. What the fuck? And that's why I don't understand. To, I've always said, pro doesn't mean pro. Yeah? You've got... Serious boxers, anyone can get a pro license, clearly. Yeah, that's what we learnt tonight. Anyone who wants one can get a pro license. It means nothing. What matters is what matters. Yeah, are you decent or are you not decent? Pro don't mean there's no qualification. What we learnt tonight is there's no qualification for actual pro. Because this guy here, this Mexican guy was useless. Big, lanky race of space. Lanky for nothing. That big lanky useless dude should have been jabbing. Look, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. When you've got a six finger Anuaki barnet, yeah, when your barnet is modelled over the Egyptian Anuaki dons, it should be jabbed off all day. This lanky waste of shit space should have been jabbing his long alien looking ass head all the way off. Yeah, care size four line, headline, hairline should be right on the crown of his barnet right now. Big facts. Yeah, it's already halfway there. This guy, Mr. Fake Mexican, should have used his lanky ass self to push the rest of it right the way off to the cliff of his barnet at the back. Big facts. Instead, he spent more time complaining about phantom shots. I've never seen a man complain so much. And this was your big shot. That's what I never understood. These guys, all you've got to do Imagine, yeah, these guys don't see the play here. This guy, this Mexican fake dude, if he'd have turned up and actually tried, if you beat KSI, you've changed your life, financially speaking. Instead, you turn, that's why I'm confused, these guys, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm convinced these guys have been paid, have been paid to jump on the floor. Because... I don't care what no one says. Anyone who spent any time in the gym. It would be interesting to be fair. To see when this guy got his license. Because I don't understand how anyone who's been in a gym. For more than two days. Can perform as bad as this guy. Lanky waste of space have an ass. And look at this goober here. Just, <laughs> just sucking along. 
It's super odd. I'm telling you now. There's something wrong with the world. Pay we've got complete dog shit on pay-per-view. And this guy here trying to gas it up. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it's never been done before. Oh, KSI's technique. His technique was shit. Oh, he doesn't stop coming forward. Yeah. Listen. If KSI goes in there, yeah. With Andrew Tate. With Jake Paul. With Tommy Fury. If he goes in there, yeah. And he shows that same tenacity against them, man. I'm going to give him full credit. If we see LSI winging forward against Jake Paul, Andrew Tate, decent people, yeah, I'm going to give him full credit. I ain't, I'm not a weird-ass hater, but what we ain't going to do is give credit. I mean, these guys weren't even sparring partners. They were literally dog shit. It shouldn't have been allowed. And the commission even said, no, we will not allow you to do six rounds with them. That should be a sign. What do you mean? Six rounds isn't even the full way. Six rounds isn't even real boxing. Do you understand? It's like three rounds is genuinely below amateur. Yeah? To do three rounds in a pro setting makes it below amateur. And you've got Mr. Calla Snifferland trying to sell it like it's something hot. Boxing's gone to shit. And it's a shame because that card was doing so well until KSI ruined it with his shit opponent picking and yeah did he have pullouts so you can't tell me that mr panini and mr swamps were the only guys available i don't believe it i don't believe a man who's never boxed before was the only valid option where did you even find the guy i don't get that where did you find swamps weird ass the whole thing's weird and Kala is supposed to be a boxing incumbent He's supposed to be involved in the boxing market. Which means he's supposed to have some level of respect. You know what? If we're going to sell shit pay-per-views, at least let's put something half decent on. Instead, Kala set the record for the worst pay-per-view headliner in the history of the game. And listen, if I'm wrong, tell me another pay-per-view headliner that was worse. Go on. Show me it. Oops, there weren't one. Anyway, I can't wait to see... How LSI goes forward from here. What we do know is the JP is going to retire. Mr. Ten, Fing Mr. Ten Finger Forehead is going to get retired. And that's just what it is. No doubt about it. 